What's up, guys? It's Coach Gaglione here. This is another edition of the Gaggles Goals Updates, Road to 220. I'm going to give you an inside look on just a day of eating. I know this is kind of a popular kind of deal. Uh, so the first thing we're going to start out with, you can see here, really simple. I got some minute rice. This is Annie Chung's. Uh, I have a couple different varieties. So this is one I actually get from Amazon. Uh, these are about 70 grams of carbs. So what I'm going to be doing moving forward uh, I'm going to be using these guys for pre and post workout on my upper body days, which I'll need a little bit less fuel. And you can see here, I got a couple of different things. This, uh, I got a local grocery store. Uh, these are earthly grains. Um, and these are per package, it's about 82 grams of carbs, so a little bit more. Uh, so I'll eat these, these guys, it's a little bit more calories. <laughs> I'll have uh, one, one pre and post workout on my my uh, lower body and deadlift days. We need a little bit more fuel, so that's gonna be one way I'm gonna kind of start to trickle down some of the calories a little bit. So we got it cooking up in the microwave here. Uh, so some people may be asking, why don't you just get a rice cooker and all this stuff? Uh, for me, it's just a matter of convenience. I'm actually gonna do some cooking today. Uh, so again, I won't, I'm not gonna film too much, but I'll kind of show you a little bit. So basically right now I'm gonna have some coffee as well. Uh, I just got some K-cups in the Keurig, but got my little super train sticker on the mug here. So I'm gonna have some caffeine. Uh, I usually have a little, a little coffee in the morning, nothing too crazy, but just a little caffeine. There's some benefit of having uh, some caffeine for fat loss and stuff. Uh, some studies have shown. So a lot of stuff is going to be some of the things I've learned throughout the years. So uh, having some carbohydrate pre and post workouts is going to be key. Uh, and then you can kind of see I'm getting dwindling down a little bit, but I'll just take a quick look uh, in the fridge. You can see here, got a lot of meat, uh, which I'm going to cook up later. I uh, got some oranges. I usually have uh, one to two oranges post workout as well. Got some carrots and peppers for micronutrients. And then we got the lean ground beef. Uh, some of this is prepped for the next couple of days. Uh, I will be also going to a seminar tomorrow. So one of the things I also have some ready to drink shakes, uh, some other stuff that I do, uh, some Epic bars, some Quest bars when I'm on the go, uh, which I'm not gonna eat today, but just figured I'd kind of mention as well. So I'll kind of just show these here. So these are Epic bars. Uh, very minimal ingredients here, so that's just mostly this is beef, a uh, little apple and bacon, and also do the Quest bars, which are fairly macro friendly. So when I'm on the go, I just have some stuff that's on the go, and notice how these are actually just purposefully uh, these kind of treats and stuff, these ready to grill things are actually purposely out of sight, out of mind, so I don't really kind of think about it too much. All my main food is going to be in the fridge. All right, so it looks like our minute rice is ready. So I'm gonna throw some a little salt on here. Uh, having some sodium is gonna be key. Uh, another thing that I'll do throughout the day for well, for hydration, uh, these no these noon tabs. Uh, again, you could just salt your food a little bit. We got iodized salt just to have a little bit, get a little bit more iodine. As well as I wanna put a little bit on the rice. And then we're gonna get a little training today. It's an upper body workout for me today. It's my secondary bench day. Uh, so I'll kind of do some incline pressing today. Uh, some other things, I'm gonna do some upper back work, some tricep work, shoulder work, and I'll see you guys later. I'm gonna do my morning workout today. Uh, this is a Friday <laughs> as I'm taping this. So um, sometimes Fridays I'd like to kind of uh, use to re recharge a little bit. I don't always do a ton of work on Fridays. Uh, I try to do the bulk of my work, my coaching, uh, my distance coaching, programming, etc. Sometimes I might do some kind of what I call like normal human <laughs> task, normal human errands. If I got to like, you know, go to the bank or if I have to, uh, you know, get a haircut or just kidding guys, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, but, um, you know, so this is a, a good day to kind of do this uh, taping. I have a little bit more downtime. Uh, again, I like to have some days where I kind of just recharge uh, and we'll definitely do some episodes. I definitely, we've talked about, I want to do an episode maybe on uh, talking about down regulation. So we might film a little bit of the yoga stuff that we've been doing at Gaglion Strength because I think that's something uh, that a lot of lifters can benefit from. Not necessarily from a stretching or mobility standpoint, but just kind of learning to relax, lear learning to down regulate, learning to kind of turn on the quote unquote parasympathetic nervous system uh, so we can kind of start the recovery process that much sooner. 
Uh, the one other thing I wanted to kind of address, you know, for some people, uh, you know, right now I'm going to a commercial gym that's closer to my apartment. Uh, kind of why you might want to do that from time to time or why it would be kind of the benefit. Uh, you know, so for my main stuff, for my real heavy stuff, um, you know, it's important that we kind of optimize. It's important that things are a little bit, you know, closer to quote unquote perfect. Uh, you know, just from a safety standpoint, you know, for me, I'm, you know, my next meet is going to be in, is equipped. Uh, so a lot of times on a squad, I'm using, you know, seven or 800 plus pounds uh, on a given movement on a bench press using over 500 pounds on a given movement. Uh, you know, so I want to make sure that things, you know, I, I'm not going to really mess around when I'm doing a max effort day. I do want to make sure things are a little bit more perfect. Uh, but as far as when I'm just doing hypertrophy work or conditioning and things like that, I, I don't always need to be optimizing for that. And sometimes training on some quote unquote bad equipment or training alone or just a different environment, a different atmosphere. Sometimes, you know, uh, I've, I've been doing a couple events, for example, at my boy, um, Zach Efinesh's gym, Underground Strength Gym. I'm actually heading there tomorrow at the time of this taping for a seminar uh, to learn a little bit more. So just training in different gyms, training in different environments, I just think it's good as an athlete just so you don't get so used to using the same exact rack, same exact plates, you know, always using calibrated plates or, you know, always using, you know, just kind of getting used to different stuff. I think as you get closer to a contest, I do think there's some benefit to, uh, you know, like for example, if you are... Uh, competing out of a monolift, you know, I think using a monolift makes sense. Uh, a good example is at Boss of Bosses, they had that front-facing monolift and that threw off a lot of people. I know that threw off some people when I was, over the last couple of years, when I was coaching people at Boss of Bosses. So uh, it definitely can make, can be a factor, but if you're used to kind of training on different equipment, uh, sometimes, you know, or different bars and things like that. One of the reasons why we might use specialty bars in training or a stiff bar on a deadlift is just so you just get used to some things that are not, are not always perfect and just some different scenarios. And you kind of learn to perform under less than perfect situations. Uh, the other thing I like about training at the commercial gym, uh, it's not my business. It's not my gym. Uh, and it allows me to kind of put my head down and focus. Sometimes, for example, if there's a leak, if there's something that needs to be cleaned up, uh, if the gym is kind of disorganized, uh, that will not allow me to focus optimally. And I can, so when I'm doing a real heavy set, I'm, I'm pretty good at blocking things out. Uh, but if I'm doing something like conditioning, for example, or if I'm trying to haul ass through my accessory work, uh, which I am trying to do because it's, I'm trying to you know lose some fat, get a little bit leaner. Uh, when I go to the commercial gym, it's not my place of work. It's not, you know, people aren't going to be, and it's fine. People aren't going to be asking me questions. So when I'm at my place of work, uh, I'm going to do my heavy set and I'll, I'll be really focused on that. But then, uh, when it's time to do my accessories I, uh, or conditioning, I like to do some stuff on my own, go for i um, I'm probably go for a walk today. So maybe I'll kind of show you guys that as well. So. Uh, it's a little bit different situation. That being said, I do think when you're training heavy, I think training in a group, uh, training with a coach is going to be is going to be optimal uh, more than not. But there's nothing wrong with kind of doing some stuff on your own, going to some different gyms from time to time, uh, especially like a local. Sometimes, again, people are busy. It's just something that's really convenient if you have a garage gym, uh, just to get some extra work in. Obviously, if you're working with a coach, it's important that you kind of communicate you're doing this stuff with you know, with your coach. So he, he or she is going to be able to make adjustments based on if you want to do extra work or if you're doing extra work, make some adjustments to the program. Uh, but definitely as an athlete, I think there's a lot of benefit to just lifting in different scenarios. And it's one of the reasons sometimes why I don't always have certain athletes go on a certain platform and use a certain monolift. I think it's important that they just kind of, even if it's small changes, uh, the barbell they're using, um, it's those small changes can make a big difference. And it's one of the reasons why I like to add some variety into the training, especially uh, early on in a training cycle. Uh, Cause you work on different weak points, you switch things up and you kind of learn to adapt and overcome uh, for different situations. So that's really important. So I'm going to hit a little upper body workout at my local crunch fitness. Uh, and then uh, we're going to, I'm going to get a little pump on, do some incline pressing, do some accessory work. Uh, and then I'll see you guys in a little bit and then we'll go into the post-workout meal. Morning workout is done. A uh, quick recap of the workout. It's my secondary bench day today. Uh, and as I get closer to the contest, uh, the bench work will be a little bit more specific. Uh, right now, still like, you know, fairly far out. I should kind of figure out how many weeks I am out, but um, not too concerned. All right, so it's a post-workout meal. Hopefully the lighting's not too bad. Uh, post-workout meal, 
I got my lean beef and rice. So some might say that it's a vertical diet, whatever you want to call it. It's meat and rice. It's protein and carbs. Uh, you know, it's going to be a little fat there, but the meat is 93%. Lean to not too much fat. Uh, at this point in the day, so I'm going to eat this in a second. Uh, I like to use hot sauce a lot. Get some extra sodium in there. Replenish the salt. Also, it's just going to flavor uh, the food a little bit. Give it some flavor. Uh, also, I'm going to take some supplements. Um, about two years, uh, two-ish years ago, I guess. At, th at this point, um, I was working with Dr. Tom Belilla at nutri Nutrition Treatment Center in Red Bank, New Jersey. I got some blood work done for him. I'm probably going to do uh, the blood work again. So I we figured out some nutrients I was deficient in. Uh, so all the supplements that I'm taking is kind of based off my blood work that I got. Um, so I'm taking some iodine. And again, we talked about the iodine salt already. Uh, some vitamin D with uh, with K. Uh, some magnesium. And I got this B complex here as well. Uh, so a lot of people are deficient in vitamin D. One of the other things I've been doing is trying to go for some 10-minute walks uh, and stuff as well. So I'm going to take that. And I got my water bottle here. These are a liter. So I try and drink about, uh, about three of these per day. Uh, if it's a little hot, I might drink a little bit more. Uh, so these are exactly one liter. So I know I'm getting about three liters of water if I drink three of these. Uh, and at least in two of them, I'll put uh, a noon tab in there. So I'm getting some more electrolytes and salt. Uh, so for the workout today, I just did kind of an escalating, kind of like a speed day with some workup sets. Did some incline pressing uh, with a pause. I did... Um, so uh, the volume wasn't super, super high, but uh, as far as the workload, but I did uh, six sets of two reps and I did uh, overhand pull-ups in between. So I like to sometimes on this day just get some mixed pulling in, in between my pressing sets, in between my warm-ups. Uh, so I did some chin-ups in the warm-up sets and then when I got to my working sets, switched to overhand pull-ups, been trying to work both grips, get stronger in different positions. Uh, I stayed in the 225 to 240 range for the first six sets, and then I worked up to a little bit. I worked up to uh, 275 for a double. Uh, after that, a couple more sets, working up to 275 on an incline press. So nothing too crazy, uh, but just trying to keep my raw strength up a little bit. Uh, then I did a down set of 225 for 10. Again, nothing too crazy, earth shattering there. Uh, just trying to work my shoulders, my chest a little bit. Did some accessory work, did some rowing, uh, did some overhead pressing, light. I uh, did a little, little, just a little blood flow on the bike as well at the end. Uh, next meal is uh, a post-workout shake after my post-workout meal. Depending on how hungry I am or how the day is going uh, will depend on when I actually eat this. But just this particular meal, uh, it's just more to get like a lot of micronutrients in and just bump my protein intake up a bit. Uh, so I'm not going to actually eat it, but this is kind of a little concoction here. You can see I got cranberries, carrots, whey protein, a little creatine. And some cinnamon. So I got some cinnamon here. Frozen cranberries. They give it some volume. Uh, cranberries. If you want to resource on some of these like foods, why I'm picking them, uh, you can check out San Efforting's Vertical Diet. So the cranberries have a lot of iodine in them. There's some great, a lot of other benefits as well for eating cranberries. I prefer to eat my food versus, uh, technically I'm drinking because it's a shake, but I prefer, this is going to kind of thicken up the shake a little bit, make it feel more like a meal versus just drinking cranberry juice. I got some baby carrots here. Uh, creatine, obviously we're working on uh, replenishing the creatine stores. A lot of research done on creatine, helping with strength, recovery, etc. Uh, and the way protein is essentially just to get bump up my protein intake. I don't think there's anything magic about a protein shake uh, in general. I think more people probably should be eating more whole foods. But this is something quick. It's a way for me to get a lot of micronutrients in. Um, something fast. Uh, and uh, like I said, sometimes just because I'm eating a lot of beef, it can get expensive. So just having at least one meal that's a shake is just a good way to just get them bumping. Just getting a quick uh, 50 grams of protein in, plus all the micronutrients from all the, the cranberries and the carrots. Uh, and then obviously cinnamon's got some digestive benefits and health benefits as well. And I like how it tastes. So uh, the, the frozen cranberries are great as well, uh, just because uh, they thicken up the shake as well. So you could certainly, if you're uh, looking to kind of put some size on, you could certainly do... Oh, and uh, I actually didn't eat an orange today. That's the other thing I'll usually do, uh, just because it wasn't really, I didn't re really work out that intensely, but also sometimes on, uh, especially in the lower body days, I'll eat an orange or two uh, post-workout. So I got some oranges in here. 
which I'm sure you guys seen in orange before, but I got some oranges, so I'll have those uh, post work on Sunday. Other things I'll do for like snacks, uh, just to get some more micros in. Again, you can check out more on the vertical diet for why I'm using some of these foods. Fructose uh, is gonna be important. It could be important post-workout just for recovery. And then uh, we got some sweet peppers here. Uh, these are really loaded with like vitamin C, a lot of health benefits to sweet peppers. They're very low calorie. Uh, and then we're gonna get started. We're gonna do some prep meal prep and we're gonna do some cooking. And I'll kind of show you how that goes. So uh, stay tuned. And uh, we're gonna have a little, a little sidebar of gags in the kitchen. Come so on. anytime uh, I've done, I've tried some Instagram <laughs> lives with uh, gags in the kitchen, me cooking, uh, I always am amazed and I think about like the Food Network stars because I don't know how they multitask and do all this stuff. So I'm just gonna kind of show you like kind of what I'm gonna do and I'm not actually gonna um, actually uh, video me cooking because I can't multitask. Uh, this is the finished product of the shake. If you guys care, it's really delicious, really good. Uh, I got my food scale here. I uh, usually like to do about six to eight ounces of beef, um, so that works out really well. I uh, get this uh, at BJ's. Again, I'm not really good at this. Okay, so this is lean beef. Um, let's see if we got nutrition facts somewhere. These are 93% lean. Yeah, so it's 93% lean, eight grams of fat, 23 grams of protein for four ounces. So. And I'll usually have about eight ounces of that. So yeah, lean ground beef. So good stuff here. Uh, for my last meal of the day, I also cook up these burger patties and eventually, so these are 85%. So this is obviously have more fat content, getting a little bit more. Uh, the, the red meat's gonna have a little bit, it's a little bit more nutrient dense and I just prefer the taste. Uh, one thing I'll be doing also, I usually do coconut or avocado oil. Everyone loves an avocado, right? Uh, avocado oil to cook. It's got a high heat smoke point, so it works really well for cooking. I got two pans here, so I could try to cut down on the prep time a little bit. Uh, and yeah, I just like to prep uh, even, you know, sometimes even up to a full week of food in advance. I'm not, I don't, I'm not really too picky about having it, you know, uh, sit in the fridge for, you know, too long. Uh, but in general, a good rule of thumb, you could do like a Sunday, Wednesday deal. A lot of people do that. Um, a lot of times I'll do my prepping in the middle of the day when I have a break between coaching and things like that. Uh, but that works out pretty well. So that's kind of the meal prepping situation. So we'll take a quick break, depending on it's not really too nice out today. Uh, so I may end up just walking uh, on a treadmill if it's not nice out. Otherwise, I'm gonna go for a 10 minute walk outside, get a little vitamin D, get moving a little bit later uh, before the next meal. Again, two meals to go. Uh, so this is kind of usually my kind of pre-work meal. Uh, pretty simple. I just got some beef. Some more lean lean beef, 93%. Gonna have some more water. Uh, and I'm gonna have, you know, I kind of cut up some cheese sticks, a little melted cheese. Uh, it's low fat. So each stick is about two, two and a half grams of fat, seven grams of protein. So I'm getting some fat, getting a little calcium, and I just kind of, you know, kind of enjoy it. Uh, I tolerate dairy okay. Um, don't really have any issues with dairy. So uh, I definitely have some, besides the whey protein, have a little cheese stick, uh, good source of protein, good source of calcium. Uh, into something I enjoy, it's just a, another way to get some extra protein in. So for this particular meal, uh, I do, uh, you know, the fat content's a little higher, starting to get a little bit higher, protein content's very high. It's keeping me satiated, because typically this is the meal I'll have before I go to work, uh, physically go to work, not doing my kind of computer, uh, some more of my in-person coaching, uh, doing any kind of physical stuff at the gym. Uh, and sometimes I might not get home until like nine o'clock uh, at night. So a, a lot of times I'll, have, I'll go through for several hours without eating. Uh, so having a high protein meal with a little fat is definitely helpful uh, and something that, you know, it just kind of fits my schedule and my lifestyle. And that's going to be really important for any diet or any nutrition plan. Uh, if you don't have compliance, you, you can't have consistency. It's really not going to work for you. So a lot of this stuff may not work for you. This is just kind of what's working for me, and I'm trying to hopefully explain why it's uh, kind of beneficial and why it's kind of helping me. So I'm going to eat this quick, then i got to get to work, uh, do some stuff in Excel. Like again, I do a lot of this. I try to do as much stuff online as possible, but again, the majority of my work is done in person. Uh, I really enjoy the in-person coaching. I really feel like, especially that team environment, the group setting, uh, I really love that. I, re I thrive on that, especially when it's uh, a heavy day. So... Uh, so it's important that you kind of feel your body and you're kind of ready to go because coaching for several hours hours can be draining. 
Uh, it takes a lot of energy to do that. So having that high protein meal uh, before I go coach is going to be critical. So I'm going to get this down, get some more work done, and I'll be back for the final meal of the day. So it's about midday. Got a couple meals in. Got my pre-workout carbohydrate. Got my post-workout carbohydrate. So my meat and rice. Had a little shake, getting some micronutrients in. Had some sweet peppers for some micronutrients. So just getting some errands done, did a little shopping, uh, did some meal prep, some cooking. Uh, and I guess I wanna just give you another quick look at the fridge. So you could just really see uh, the big thing we're focusing on is protein and produce. So you can see, you know, got a lot of food prep for the week. Uh, you know, we're gonna talk about, for my next meal, I'm gonna have some more meat and some cheese sticks, just get some calcium, a little bit more protein. I've got some low-fat cheese sticks here. We got some additional kind of produce in here. We're talk about the oranges, I'll have post-workout sometimes. Uh, and then I just got some stuff here, some ready-to-drink shakes from, from when I'm on the go. Uh, if I really need another snack, got some pickles here, got some different spices and hot sauce, got some my water in here. Uh, if I need some quick caffeine, if I got a big event coming up or if I got a big lift, I got these energy shots as well. Uh, and then we'll talk about later, we talk, got some spinach here as well. Let's get loaded with potassium, other good micronutrients, those green leafy vegetables, really key. Uh, the other thing I wanted to kind of address, you know, because I've had some people say like, you know, uh, why don't you have fresh, fresh veggies? Why don't you just have fresh rice, things like that? And truth be told, it's really just uh, out of convenience. Out of uh, so with the meat, is, the meat is very hard. Uh, the meat is the one thing I like to spend a lot of time on because I think it's a, it's a big portion, uh, a big part of the diet for for strength, for recovery, getting that protein requirement. Uh, protein has a higher thermic effect of food, so it's really important that we have a high quality meat. Uh, and I spend most of the time meal prepping on the actual meat itself. So when it comes to the rice, uh, I don't need to measure the rice. It's already pre, you know, so. And with the veggies, same thing. It's kind of a lot of times pre-portioned. Just steam, the steam fresh. I got a lot of these steam fresh Brussels sprouts. Uh, and I, can, I know what I'm getting. I know how many calories are getting it. I don't really need to count so much. The only thing I really have to measure, I uh, measure my water, obviously, with those one liter bottles. And then measure my actual meat itself. So it just makes things a little bit easier. I'm not saying it's the best way. Obviously, if you had everything fresh, that'd probably be the best. Uh, but then... You gotta be a little bit more careful about food spoiling and things like that. Uh, so I do think it's, like, again, for me, it works out well that I just really focus on uh, just prepping the meat and the other stuff is kind of, you know, the minute rice, you know, you can get like Uncle Ben's or different varieties. I use the Annie Chung you can get from Amazon. Uh, and then, like I said, a lot of the steam fresh bags. So I do a lot of, I really start to enjoy Brussels sprouts. Um, boom, so I pop that in for a couple of minutes. You know, it's only about, that whole bag is only maybe like 30 carbs. Uh, so, you know, the other things, you know, I'm not too worried about that. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's low calorie. It's high micronutrients. And the veggies are really great for helping as well, keeping you full if you're trying to reduce calories uh, for its very minimal, you know, very low calorie, but very high nutrient density. So, yeah, and then on an off day, uh, I'll just have a little bit less carbs or no carbs sometimes. Uh, and just focus on protein and produce. And I think if you focus on protein and produce, uh, they say like, you know, meat for strength, veggies for health. I think that's uh, going to be a really good starting point for a lot of people. When it comes to performance, I do think the carbohydrate piece uh, is really important. Uh, and I've done some like keto and like low carb stuff, carb backloading, carb night and things like that in the past. Uh, and I find that it's hard to sustain long term and it's really easy to rebound uh, going back to kind of nor quote unquote normal eating. So I'm just trying to focus on better habits. Uh, so we got a couple more meals to go. Uh, but again, thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for our next meal. All right, we got our final meal of the day. So I got some burger patties in here. It's a little fattier meat, so something to kind of hold me over through the night. Uh, it's going to be, you know, again, getting that more saturated animal fat. Um, sometimes also I might have like a snack of nuts, uh, but I kind of started to cut those out because I'm trying to remove some fat, remove some calories, uh, probably remove, like I, t I mentioned, kind of removing some of the carbohydrate um, on my upper body training days because I'm not going to need as much uh, fuel on those days. So those are some kind of strategies I'm doing. So obviously when you're manipulating calories, 
A lot of times protein is going to be fairly constant. Um, you know, I, some recommendations for that, you maybe want to do like around at least a minimum of 0.8 grams per pound if you're kind of a little, little lean, uh, lean already. Uh, that's on the low end. Some people kind of recommend one gram per pound. If you're not so lean, uh, you can kind of do like, you know, one gram per like pound of like lean mass that you have as well. But in general, so I'm usually trying to get in around like 250 grams or so of protein on average. Sometimes, you know, maybe I, sometimes, you know, anywhere from 220 to 250 in that range. Uh, so getting about, you know, 0.8 to, to one gram per pound of body weight. And then I'm going to fluctuate, manipulate the carbohydrate or end or fat intake uh, as I'm kind of reducing calories moving forward with the diet. Kind of mentioned before, I got the steam fresh uh, Brussels sprouts. I've also got some spinach, uh, which is high in potassium. So I've been having so I've got some spinach here. So I'm just kind of making sure I've got a, a good balance of health, performance, um, and again, we're looking for those aesthetic and body composition changes. So that's going to be kind of what we're doing moving forward. Uh, I'm going to have a little bit more water before I go to sleep. And then I usually have an alarm, I have an alarm that goes off at 10 o'clock, uh, and that kind of alarms me to get to bed. Uh, a lot of people talk about having alarms going off in the morning. I know Mark Bell's talked about this. So having an alarm to kind of actually get ready for bed, go to bed, is really critical. So I just make sure that I'm trying to, you know, be in bed. Sometimes I'm not perfect, but uh, always before 11, most of the time I try and get in bed before 10.30. Uh, so I'm getting 7, 8, 9 sometimes even 10 hours of sleep, especially if I have a really heavy day coming up for, or if I'm recovering, uh, especially with the equipped lifting, it's really neurally demanding. So that sleep and that recovery is gonna be that much, that much more important. So this was a day of eating, a day in the life with Gags. Uh, this is another edition of our Gags Goals Updates, my road to 220. Hopefully this gives you some insight on my diet. Not saying it's perfect. Uh, there's definitely things that could be improved upon, uh, but obviously you know I've been as heavy as 340, I'm weighing about 240 now, so I've lost and kept off over 100 pounds of body weight over the last couple of years. Uh, when I started this kind of journey was two years ago, it was 335, um, and yeah, I'm going down. So I'm looking to kind of sit in like the 230 range, uh, and then you know, kind of closing out the end of the year. I got this uh, Reebok record breakers, this powerlifting meet coming up. I registered for the 220 class, so we're going to do like a little water cut for that. Um, yeah, and then in 2019, we'll see. But just taking it one step at a time. Again, the goal is to make weight. Uh, the goal is to put on the best performance I can. Uh, put a, Get a PR total. That'd be the icing on the cake. So I appreciate you guys following along the journey. I hope this helped you. Um, again, I've, I've struggled with my weight my whole life. I've struggled with my nutrition my whole life. I finally feel like I'm getting a handle on it. And I'm finding out what works for me. Because again, at the end of the day, it's about compliance. It's about what works for you and your body and what's gonna help you support your goals. So there's really no hard, especially when it comes to, you know, there you can kind of argue that there could be some programming that's cookie cutter and stuff, but I really believe when it comes to nutrition, our lives are so different. So I really think that nutrition should really be more habit-based and less about like, how many macros do you have? What food should I eat? Uh, hopefully this gives you some insights. So again, my life's gonna be much different than yours. But these, these are the kind of the habits and things that kind of help support my goals. Uh, a couple of big takeaways, hopefully, is the meal prep, uh, focusing on pro protein and produce. I have like little things like the water bottles that are one liter. So it takes a lot of the guesswork out of it, stuff that's kind of pre-done for you. So think about strategies, think about different habits, so you don't have to really think about it. I have my pills, my, uh, my supplements, my vitamins. They're laid out for the week already. The meat is prepared for the whole week. I have minute rice ready. I have I do fill up my water with my noon tabs every night. So stuff's very easy. It's kind of done. And once you kind of start to figure out those habits, so you want to think about training, and you could rate that your nutrition and your sleep and stress management. Uh, and we'll definitely talk a little bit more about how we could regulate stress management with some of the yoga and some of the other stuff we're doing in another episode. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If the video helped you, please subscribe. Uh, and uh, yeah, thanks. Until next time, stay strong and we'll see you soon.